Hey there, today we're going to look at adding IntelliSense into Knit. So this is going to add a better development experience when you're accessing services from other services, controllers from other controllers, things like that. And so this will solve about, you know, 90-ish percent of your IntelliSense woes within Knit. Now it does require some restructuring of your services and controllers, and it does require a change to how everything is loaded. But it's not too crazy. Uh, it can be done with a little refactoring. Even if you had, you know, a hundred services or something, uh, you could knock it out in an hour and get on with your day. So what we're going to do is look at this in a couple different tiered approaches. So the first thing we're going to do is restructure how we load modules, and then we're going to restructure how services and controllers are created. And then thirdly, we're going to change how we access those various services and modules. Okay, so let's just take a look at this right away. Uh, traditionally, in Knit, we would load services, for instance, using add services. And then you give it some sort of uh, parent instance, and it's going to scan through, and it'll just load all modules in there. So a lot of people might have just a folder called uh, services. As a lot of people have learned, that doesn't really scale well. When you have a large game, this services folder just becomes huge and confusing and disorganized. So a lot of people will uh, organize uh, by feature. And so they have folders named by feature. So in this instance, I have like a money folder and all my modules relating to money will be in here. And then maybe I have one on data, so on and so forth. In this case, as we can see in our money folder, uh, we have a module in here that's not a service. So ideally we don't want that to be loaded when we call add services, that doesn't make any sense. However, it will be added, not added, but it will be uh, required when we call add services in this context, right? So we're calling add services on the money folder. So both of these modules are gonna be loaded. So we don't want that one loaded, but it is. And data service is not being loaded, but we want it to be. So we have to have another call to data, I suppose, but this, this is just messy. We don't want this, that's not great. So what Knit is actually doing under the hood, if we go and look at it, is it's simply scanning through the parent, it's getting the module scripts and it's requiring them. And that's it, right? That is all it's doing, nothing fancy. It is adding it into this table that's at, that it's returning, but that's just, if you want it, <laughs> no one actually uses that as far as I know. So it's kind of a dead feature. What we can do instead is write our own little loader loop so we're just gonna do a little for loop. We're gonna get all descendants of our source folder. And we just wanna check if V is a module script and if V's name ends in service, then we'll require that module and that's it. Now we've sidestepped this whole thing and now we are going through, we're loading money service and data service. We're not loading money adder, that'll do its own thing. And it's that simple. This is just a, a quick pattern match, uh, basically saying that we want the name to end in service. Uh, this little dollar sign just denotes that the E has to be matched as the last character in the string. And by nature, all these other characters have to be right next to each other. So in other words, it's just saying the string has to end in capital S service. Uh, and those will be the ones required. So if you're doing this on the, uh, on the client for controllers, you just do controller instead, as simple as that. Okay, so we're requiring our modules, we're getting going. That's our first step in terms of our change up here. The second one is digging into how we can change our services uh, to allow for better IntelliSense. So if we go into our data service, for instance, uh, we have this method called get data, and it's just returning a table with money equals 10. You know, you, most likely you'd have you know player here and you'd get data for a given player. But this is just for an example. So we're just gonna return a table with money equals 10. Nice and simple, right? And then in the money service, we, we have some other stuff set up for later, but um, in knit start, we go and we grab that service using knit get service, and we get the data and we print it out. So in its current form, this should work. If I run the game, we'll see data, is printed out. So we got data from the money service that worked just fine. Uh, but there's a problem here. And if we go back to money service, when we try to access data service, 
you can see there's nothing popping up when I put a colon there. There's no IntelliSense. There's no autocomplete. It doesn't know what is inside data service, at least not much. If we use a dot, we'll see we know there's a name and a client and some other things. It's kind of nonsense. We don't really care about those things. We're not going to use them. But we want to see get data show up there. So the question is, how do we get there? How do we see get data within that service? First things we're going to do, so we're going to scrap create service from all of our services, right? So now it's just a table that we're returning. We're not calling create service. So we need to do that in this case for all of our services, otherwise it'll break. Okay, so that's first step. Second step is in the loader where we call require, we're gonna wrap this with knit create service. So basically we're just moving it. Instead of calling create service within the service itself, we're calling it when we load it. That's what we're doing. We're just shifting where that's called. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step is instead of using get service, we're going to use require. And now we go to data service and we put a colon. Look at that. We have IntelliSense. We see get data. We see it returns type data. So if I did data dot, I'd see what's in it. We see there's money in that. Great, right? So now we have IntelliSense into our service. And again, the same stuff works on the client for, for controller to controller. Um, obviously, you probably want to move this to the top like this. That'll work just fine. Don't worry. That's not going to cause any issues. Now, some people might complain because all of a sudden they're going to realize, oh my gosh, my code doesn't work because one of my modules requires another module and that module goes and requires him. So you have a, you know, a circular dependency issue where module A or service A needs service B, where service A requires service B, but service B requires service A. Now, if you have, a solu or if you have an issue like that in your game, that's really your own problem. That's a, that's a data structure issue, not a data structure issue. That's a, uh, architecture issue within your structure that you need to change. Cyclical circular dependencies are dangerous. They keep you into this, this terribly strongly coupled environment. You don't want them. So if this doesn't work for you because you have circular dependencies, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I try to try to redesign things so you don't have circular dependencies. NIT's purpose is not to allow you to have circular dependencies. That was a side effect of it. Uh, I did not intend on that to be the case, but that's what happened. So uh, again, we can call, uh, we can require a service from the top here and it'll still work. So if I hit run, we'll, sh we'll see the data is still printed out just fine. And really that's about it. So again, the, the changes we did here within our loader script, instead of using add services or on the client add controllers, we're going to scan through our code base and we're just going to by hand require the modules that we know are services or controllers. In this case, we're, do, we're doing that by matching against the name of it. And then we're gonna call create service on that required module from here. So instead of calling create service from the service, we strip that from our call here. We just have a normal table and we call it here instead. After that, all we have to do is use require and require the service modules directly in order for this to work. Now, I will say the one thing is that when we do this, we because we're sidestepping get service, we need to make sure that we're carefully only requiring modules that we're, we know were services that were loaded. <laughs> because in knit get service, it's actually doing some assertions to make sure you can do this. So for instance, it's checking to see if knit is started. Clearly it's probably not started when you require it at the top here. Um, it's also checking some other things here, making sure it's actually a service that's been loaded, things of that nature. So we have to be careful of that. But for the most part, I think it'll be fine. I think the general principle of making sure you're not really using services until knit start, it still applies in this case. Okay, so that's about it. Um, now, the only caveat is that if you are writing code on the client and trying to access a service, for instance, uh, here we have, let's say, knit get service 
a data service. Obviously, we have the same problem where we can't see into uh, the various methods. Well, let's use money service instead since it has a client get player money method. The same thing, we should see get player money, but we don't. So if we run this, we should see, you know, player money. Cool, so that worked just fine. We see the money printed out, that works. Uh, but again, there's no IntelliSense into this. And this is kind of where I was saying at the beginning, this solution is gonna fix, you know, most of your IntelliSense problems, but it's not gonna fix this. And unfortunately, there's not really a great way to go about fixing this, uh, just by nature of how this is working, uh, where money service exists on the server and the server only. And so by nature, the client has no way of seeing this module in any context. So it can't figure out what's in it and say, well, get player money as a method or something. So instead you'd have to create your own types folder somewhere and require it. And then, you know, you might have like export type money service clients and then have whatever methods you want there. And then you have to cast it here. It's ugly, it's not great but that's really the only solution at the moment for that. But I figured I might as well highlight that at the end. So anyway, that's it. I hope this helps. Uh, let me know if you guys have any issues with this or problems. I, I hope this helps people, I don't know, see that they can actually add a little IntelliSense into their projects with Knit still. Now this is gonna work both if you're working in Knit in Studio or if you're using it externally in VS Code with Wally and Roho, uh, it should work across the board just fine.